Hey, what's going on? It's your boy Sintel with the Intel, and we're getting ready to do a watch along slash review of the Book of Boba Fett, episode two. If you haven't caught up with episode one, go ahead and click one of the links below. That way we can be up to speed. And also make sure you click that subscription button and the bell icon so that you can get up to date notifications anytime a new episode like this drops. All right, so let's go ahead and get this second one going. I loved the first one. Maybe the second one have a little bit more dialogue. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get this bad boy started. Speak, prisoner. That's right, Sand Ninja. Well, if he's not gonna speak, he no longer needs his head. Huh. Perhaps he fears the rancor. Yo, you see with the way my man jumped out of the way? And it's good to know the rancor is still alive. Well, no. Maybe it's the offspring of the old rancor. Yeah, okay, so the empty. Rancor's been dead, huh? Apologies for the intrusion. That's the mayor? The mayor had nothing to do. He's a member of the Order of the Night Wind. And you admit it. Wow, shot him dead in his head. Give this man his reward. It was Jabba the Hutt's throne, and now it is mine. <laughs> and I will take this payment. Is what you should have brought me as tribute. Wow. Yo, you see the way his eyes narrowed? What's going on here? In what respect? Mayor Mokshai sent me here as though there's something I should know. Now you're sweating like a gumped on Mustafa. A <laughs> gumped on Mustafa? What is that? Uh oh. Is this the litter that we've been hearing about? The litter? <laughs> Yo, this litter better be off the chain. Dang, another hut. Two of them, the twins, huh? I mean, they can't really be mad at him. I mean, Leo's the one that choked him out. Dang, they sitting there like, hey, this is my boo. It's my bae. It's the boo and bay litter. The Espar Kajitik Pujaba. Antapes Chiji. Dang, they always got a pot full of squirrels or something. I am Daimyo here. Dang, my man, <laughs> my man dried himself off with a rat. <laughs> Who is this dude with the shoulder pads? Oh, a super Wookiee, huh? Never seen a super Wookiee. So oh, you hear the, you hear the way the wood is straining? Uh-oh. Yo, that's a pissed off Wookiee. Yeah, you're gonna have to fight that dude. Yo, didn't last episode, didn't he get a Wookiee pelt as a gift? <laughs> My man sleep in his hyperbaric chamber again. See, that's what happens when you get old. Whoa. Yo, at any given moment, somebody could get it in the sand. <laughs> yeah, what? that mule sound never gets old. What is that? It's like a sand snake. That thing is moving fast. Oh, that's like a train. Dang, those definitely ain't stormtrooper shooting because they are accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they literally just did a drive-by in Star Wars. Huh. I will stop the train. I will take rifle and stick. Be back by morning. Dang. <laughs> he made it sound like he was going to the store to get milk. <laughs> I mean, it's no loss to the sand people. They're like, yo, you want them problems? Well, you know, we'll give you a stick. He better put that stick on somebody's ass, though. Yeah, fam, I got this rifle and this stick. <laughs> and a chapped head. That's a messed up entrance. Dang, what if he just wanted a drink? Dang. 
Oh, we got the stick now. Now what's up? Yo, I need y'all to keep in mind that the actor playing Boba Fett is over 60 years old. This whole man is putting in work. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, my man took all of them. That's what's up. He's a man, stop! I will teach you how to ride. I will teach you. <laughs> Yo, they were stripping them quick. <laughs> Yo, they was about to steal the hubcaps and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gotta work on them jumps. You know what, though? It's funny, because you see this on TV all the time, like, jumping from horse to horse and all that other stuff. But you'd be like, how you, how you just get that on your first go-round, right? Okay. Hey, they out here doing repairs. Okay. Nice! Yo, he's like, yo, I'm still nice. I'm still nice with this, though. <laughs> Squad, yo, we rolling. Let's go. <laughs> yo, they be killing me with these drive-bys. Y'all ain't learned to hide the bantha yet. <laughs> I don't understand that. I feel like they haven't learned anything. Yeah, man, they're like, yo, we are not Star Troopers. We got aim. Damn. They're like, yo, we nice with this too. Why, why weren't y'all shooting this good earlier? I mean, sure. And he choking the hell out that dude. Time to learn that jump, homie. Oh, nice. Chill butt out of here. Got old train heist. Oh, that's like the, the tribe, the tribe lady. No, the, the dude, yeah, stick man. You know he better come over here and let him have it. Yeah, that's right, baby, let's go. Oh, we better go even faster. All right. Oh, <laughs> immediately put your hands on folks. They got, they got the right one in there. <laughs> oh, oh, dang. I'm gonna hit the brakes. <laughs> Watch out! Oh, yeah, you toast on me. Whoa. Oh, that sucks. Yo, my man dipped. Ah! <laughs> he was like, not me. At that point, you just gotta just start breaking stuff, right? Yo, look at the way he's sitting there like a king on a throne. We thought you were uncivilized raiders. We were trying to protect our route. Uncivilized. And if you are to pass, the toll is to be paid to them. Hmm. Now walk. Yeah, fam. <laughs> I feel like when they do that, they're like, yeah, take that, take that. <laughs> Talk all that trash. Y'all might want to cap that. Y'all kind of wasting it a little bit. Just, all right, well, figured y'all might be thirsty later. <laughs> Bubba Fett moving up in the ranks. Yo, he get to hang out in the, in the, at the big boy table now. 
Guide you from inside of your head, huh? Yo, they gave him the green. <laughs> Yo, you know what you know about them lizard shrooms, homie. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to get high with people that look like that <laughs> with some scary masks. Nah, <laughs> that's a no go. Now look at you walking around and sand in your drawers. Like I need them to give him some clothes too. Dang, sand looks like ocean waters. What are they like, Jawas? Yeah, man. Got that PTSD from that Sarlacc pit, huh? Oh, yeah, go on, man. Go on, get your daddy's ride back. Hmm. You know, they really let my man get high and wander the desert. <laughs> I don't I don't know if those are good friends. <laughs> get like, damn, he is hardcore. He survived that too. Thank you. I was about to say, please rope my guy up. This is dope, though. You know, you got to get your gear right. My man over here like a sand samurai. <laughs> Yo, I like this. This is dope. Yeah. Yo, the ceremony's dope. I'm feeling that. Yeah, man. Yo, he's like, yeah, you look sharp, homie. He said, I got my fit right. My head ain't chapped. Yeah. That's right, my guy. Respect, he earned it. Okay. Yo, I'm loving the ceremony. There's something about that. Cause you had to earn that. Yeah, man. <laughs> Look at the pride on his face. I love it. I love it. Yes. More of that. Whole squad gonna get in on it. That's right. Yo, I like that episode. That was dope. I like that. I like that. No, that was a lot. Goodness. I mean, I'm loving the fact that it's got like these two different versions, right? You have what is what we assume could be the present with him trying to deal with taking over the Hutt's territory. And then, you know, you're dealing with how he earned respect in the land by dealing with the Tuscan Raiders or the Sand People. I don't know which one is the correct way to say what. <laughs> the uh, the hammerhead looking creature, that's the mayor. Now that was a good way to kind of like throw the sin off of him because well, I think we all kind of assume that that person is gonna be the end all bad guy. Well, because of his arrogant assistant, who's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> He's so smug. You just want to like bash his head in with, with one of like the, the, the special sticks. Good old fashioned train heist right like the thing that we really loved well many of us really loved about the the mandalorian is this western feel it has like that western kind of element and tatooine is like the place to be for that if you want that kind of kind of vibe and now now we got the book of boba fett happening right there i like this gear and i do kind of like the feel of the music it's kind of it's kind of hitting too yeah like hot audio <laughs> and the thing about westerns is like most really good westerns have either like a bank heist or a train robbery right so this one we got like the the train the the big long speeder and they're just like you know blowing their way through these people territory killing people at will and we knew they weren't stormtroopers they were way too accurate to be stormtroopers stormtroopers have been shooting all over the, the countryside killing they banters kicking sand in they face shooting dogs all this stuff <sighs> and then my man boba was like let me 
show you my skill set. Big props to the to the actor playing uh, Boba Fett. Timura Morrison is, uh, I believe I'm, I'm probably saying that wrong. That's an old dude. And he in there like doing young man stunts. <laughs> And he's doing it from like back in the day when he, I guess when he first survived the, the Sarlacc pit to, to now. I wonder how much time has passed since then. You can see on his body, it's already, it's already war torn. Like you see, it looks like he's probably been burned maybe from the skin on his, on his shoulders and his back and on the top of his head. I wonder if there's a story behind that as well. Just watching this whole thing move forward, especially in the, in the dreamscape, uh, we get an opportunity to maybe see where, where he comes from a little bit more clear. I've read on a couple of different blogs and Star Wars fan, fan posts that there's a relationship between like the Jawas and the Sand People, that they may be at one point in time, one of the same people at one point in time in early, early, early Tatooine history. And then you see the tree with like j the Jawa eyes popping up. And I guess that's the tree that allows like the people that have earned their status to to build whatever that stick is that magical stick it's kind of like a knight's sword and i guess you know this walk in the desert is supposed to uh, symbolize like a rite of passage uh, like it's a warrior's journey I mean, you've become of age and you take this this journey to get your name you know i think in some indigenous cultures some people take that that rite of passage to get their name, they change from being a child to, to a man, it's, it's that kind of thing. And I liked that whole process. The robing process was was pretty awesome because he's been walking around looking disheveled, like, like nobody's business. That old torn up white whatever, it looked like pajamas. I've been waiting for them to do something, but then they saved it. I think they knew, writers and the director knew that we've been waiting for him to get it together. And the robing process is so, so, so cool. If I remember right, I think it was um, The Last Samurai when Tom Cruise is like putting on his armor, there's like a moment of a visual beauty as you see like how it how it all happens and stuff. Um, I know some people feel some kind of way about that. I, I understand that. But politics aside, just we're just addressing like like the ceremony is is what I'm trying to address. And then you see the robing and the wrappings that's going on, and all the care that's being taken. It does make you think too, because you're thinking about like these in, indigenous people to to Tatooine, and it's not a whole lot, right? It's just sand. Like there's there's literal moments of people just digging in the sand, doing something, sprinkling it on something or whatever it is. There's not a lot of like tangible things that you can like hold on to. Hence the importance of a that stick and then also maybe the robes that they wear because it's not like you see like cotton growing in the sand in the sand dunes or anything so what little that you do have it probably holds a whole lot of value hence the robing process and then you building all of this because it's not a whole lot to to do this with <laughs> in popular western culture many people believe that a lot of the indigenous people here would like smoke peyote in order to reach a certain high and go on those those journeys in order to get a good understanding on this one they got a lizard <laughs> <laughs> Lizard jumps in your mouth, I guess licks your brain a couple of times and off you go to find your find your hidden truth. I think I'm enjoying the past more so than the present. It, it's just the journey of how he's kind of like been reborn out of the Sarlacc pit, right? Whoever he was before, he was just a bounty hunter. He gets rebirthed through the Sarlacc pit and then he finds these people to kind of put him on the right path. So now that we're building up this idea of who he's becoming regarding having like honor in his in his life or in his world how he runs this tattooing city in the face of the fets is going to be interesting it seems like everywhere he goes based off what we've seen so far at least he he earns respect he earned respect from the mandalorian in the past season we see it him doing it with the tuscan raiders the young lady that's by his side that has his back she obviously respects him i mean she doesn't look like the type of person that's going to be arguing with a whole lot of people and she seems like the type of person that's kind of like kind of do her own thing and she's like yeah, i'm gonna ride or die with you the two green pig-like dudes that are the guards. Even when the huts came back, I, there was a part of me that was like, well, maybe he's probably gonna jump ship and go back to the huts because that's who his, their, his original alliance was with. But you know, he stood firm, you know, with with Boba Fett, and it was like, this is this is what we're going to do. The, the interaction with the mayor was still was still just kind of funny. This underground sand ninja assassin group. We'll see how the fets the fets get down. I think they they're like uh, what's the term in gangster movies? They're like made men. I think that's the term that that, that I'm looking for. So we'll see how they're gonna get around them trying to get Boba Fett's old old territory back, and what uh, Boba Fett's gonna do to, to kind. Like address some of those problems, yo. Okay, th yo, I'm long winded enough. I really enjoyed this episode more so than the second one. It's gonna be a nice, cool, fun, slow burn, and I'm here for it. Yo, it's your boy Sintel with the Intel. Thank you for hanging out with me. If you haven't seen the first episode, make sure you check out the first one so that we can be up to speed. And the best way to do that is to click the subscription button. Uh, of course, hit that bell icon so that you can get up to date notifications anytime new stuff like this 
drops. We can all be on the same page, you know? And, you know, let's bond together in the Tuscan Sand Raider way. I'm out. <laughs>